Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Cura to work with your 3D printer. I did this video, I think it was a little over a year ago, and a lot's changed since then, so I wanted to kind of walk through it again, uh, kind of go over some of the stuff that's changed going into Cura 4.8, uh, talk about some of the profiles that I already made for you guys that you can just download and import. Uh, so basically, we'll walk through the entire process start to finish, we'll run through the install, uh, grab the profiles, and then show you how to slice an object. If you have any questions about the process, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to want to do is download Cura. So I've got this site up. I will link to this in the description below. Uh, but you just want to go here and go to download for free and then choose the operating system you're working with. I have Windows 10 here, so I'm just going to go with that and download. Then you can see here that it's downloading. Let that finish really quick. All right, it's done. And then we want to launch this. So I'm just going to do show in folder. And here's the download. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. Uh, I have Cura 4.7 already installed. Uh, so you won't see this unless you already had a previous version installed. Um, but I'm not going to uninstall the previous version. So I'm just going to hit no here. All right, now you just want to walk through the default install process with the standard or default settings. So just next, agree to the license agreement. And then if you wanted to change the install location, you would do that here, but the default is fine. And just keep hitting next and then install. And that's just going to run through the install really quick. All right, now that that's installed, we'll just go ahead and hit finish and it's gonna automatically open Cura because we are telling it to. All right, now we got Cura open here and we'll go ahead and walk through the startup wizard. So just hit get started. And then agree to the license agreement. And then just hit next here. And next again. And you can either create an account or skip this process. I personally don't create an account, um, but that choice is yours. It makes it easier to share settings and stuff across computers. Um, but I'm just going to hit skip. All right, now we have to find our printer. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using my Creality Ender 3 Pro. So I'm going to go to add a non-network printer here and then minimize this and then search for Creality. If you have a different printer, you would want to search for that brand and then select the printer. So with Creality 3D selected, it goes into all the printers they had. Uh, the last time I did this video, they didn't have the distinction between the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. Uh, now they do. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose the Ender 3 Pro and then hit Next. All right, then here it's showing you all of the printer settings that it's pulling in. Uh, we don't have to make any changes here. So we'll just go ahead and hit next. And now we're into Cura. So the first thing I wanna mention is you're gonna to want to uh, click up here and then switch this to custom. Uh, that way you can actually see all of the settings. And then typically I'm gonna to go to this menu here and change it from basic to uh, expert uh, just so I can see everything in here and then I'm just dragging this down um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the Cura profiles that I have set up for you guys so we'll just go over to uh, my site I'll have a link to this in the description below uh, but we want to uh, download the profile for what we're using. If you have an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, you can use these. If you have a generic or any other printer, you can use um, one of these profiles here. I don't believe there's much of a difference between them. I added a, a 
profile for minis here uh, for the Ender 3, but for the most part, I think there might just be one or two setting differences. Uh, I'm just going to walk through the process of importing the standard quality one. Uh, it'll be the same for the high quality or the mini one if you wanted to go that route. So I'm just going to download that. And then you can see here it's downloaded. So if I go to my downloads folder, uh, it's going to be right here. So now we're going to go back over to Cura. Uh, let's go to Preference, Configure Cura, and then under Profiles, uh, we will go to Import. Then just go to Downloads, and then select the profile you just downloaded. And that's really all there is to it. Now I'm just going to click on that and hit Activate, um, and then close out of this. You can also switch between the profiles here as well. Before we get into the settings more, uh, there's a plugin that I recommend downloading first. So we'll just go up to the marketplace here and just wait for the plugins to load. And then we want to install the settings guide. So we'll just click on that, click install. So what this is, is it's a overview of all of the settings that they have here in Cura. It's the most detailed that I've seen. All right, so now we have to restart Cura. So I'm just gonna close here and then just launch Cura again. And then you can get to that guide by going to extensions and then settings guide. And you can go through and take a look at uh, basically any setting that you want to get more detail on it. So start G code, it goes into all the information around it. Uh, a couple of good examples in here are going to be your infills. If you're curious about the infill density, it kind of goes into more detail there. Or your infill patterns kind of talks about all of them here as well, kind of the pros and cons of each. And I did a video covering uh, infill patterns as well. I'll link to that below. Um, I go into detail around uh, so when you want to use different ones, uh, what I recommend for the standard one and stuff like that. All right, so I'm just going to close out of this. I just thought that this would be a really good reference for you guys, and it's the one plugin that I pretty much always download. All right, so I'm just going to close this. Now, there's a couple things I wanted to mention here um, with the profile that you download it. It's a good starting point. Um, it works quite well for me, uh, but you might have to make some tweaks or you might want to make some tweaks. But a couple things to point out are going to be around uh, infill. I have the infill density set to 20% by default. Uh, you might want to adjust that based on what you're printing. Um, the other one is going to be your temperature. Again, I have this just set to 200. It's a good starting point and the build plate set to 60. Um, I recommend printing a temperature tower if you're working with new filament that you haven't worked with before. Um, that'll give you the best temperature for the filament that you're using. And then lastly um, is going to be supports. Just wanted to make a couple notes here. Um, by default, your support structure is normal. Uh, I try to avoid using normal. I always use tree supports. I like them much better. Uh, so if you click here... Um, it, it just switches it over to tree and then you want to make sure you set a density just 10% um, unless it's not going to print right here but let me show you a difference I'm going to drag uh, object in here just benchy and kind of show you the difference between the two so let's go back to normal I'm going to slice this and this is also going to show you how to use the preview feature as well so I figured it would make sense All right, if you go up to preview now you can see exactly what it's going to be printing. So if you go over to the right here, you can kind of scroll down. You'll see this is going to be 240 layers. Each layer, uh, you can see what it's printing. But here at the bottom, you can see the supports. Let me get a better view here. Now with Benchy, there aren't many supports here. Uh, but you can see how it's kind of building them up on the plate. And then it just attaches to the bottom. In a lot of cases, it works fine. The issue I have with the normal supports are uh, it uses a lot of extra filament and they can be very difficult to get off sometimes. Uh, with tree supports, they come off much easier. So let me go over to prepare and just switch this over to tree. 
and slice that again. Then we'll go back over to preview. And you can see here that it's creating the tree supports on the side, uh, basically where it feels it's needed based on the settings. You see a small support being built here. Um, and then it's building up the tree supports on the side to kind of help with the openings here and inside. Um, this is actually a really good example because in this scenario, I would not want these supports here. Uh, it's somewhat difficult to open up and they're not really needed because uh, you're actually wanting to test your printer with this print and putting the supports here uh, kind of defeats the purpose. So if you don't want the supports to go inside of the print and you just want it to be on the build plate, uh, we'll go back over to prepare, switch support placement from everywhere to touching build plate and then slice it again. And then you can see here, it's not actually putting the supports inside here like it was doing before. It's just um, putting the support through the arches here so that it's supporting all the extra pieces. Again, with the Benchy, you wouldn't use supports because uh, it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, but you can see the difference between uh, having it touched a build plate and everywhere. Uh, it's especially important if you're printing things like a fan duct cover, for example, where if you have it set to everywhere, the inside of the fan duct where the air would be flowing through, um, it's going to be filled with supports and it's just going to block the air. Uh, so it kind of defeats the purpose. So supports are off in the profile by default. Um, but I wanted to point out the two different types here because if you're just getting started, I think it's important to understand them. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is going to be your adhesion type. Um, so under build plate adhesion, you have skirt, uh, brim, and raft, or none. Uh, this is a skirt. It's basically just doing three lines around the outside of the print. It's basically acting as a primer. So it's going to prime the nozzle, get it ready to start printing. Uh, this is what I use most of the time. If I'm working with something with uh, small uh, pieces, I would probably do a brim most of the time. Uh, if a brim doesn't work, I'll go over to raft, but let me show you what a brim does really quick. It's kind of like a skirt. It's just more lines or layers, and then it actually connects to the print. So if we go down to our first layer here, uh, you can see where this would be the bottom of the boat, and then the brim is actually touching the outside of it. And then when this is done, you just break all of that off. It comes off pretty easy. Um, and then the last one is gonna be a raft. Uh, this is good if you're questioning if your build plate's level or if you have any warps in the build plate or just need better adhesion, uh, I would go with the raft. Uh, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna build a foundation to actually put the print on. So the first couple layers is just gonna be building that raft and then it's gonna start printing on the actual raft itself. The issue with this is uh, you're not gonna get all the detail on the bottom of the print because you have to pull it off of the raft. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I try to avoid using rafts unless I have to. Um, I would typically go with the brim first. That works probably nine times out of 10 when I have to add additional adhesion. Uh, for that outlier, um, I would use the raft. So hopefully this helps you get started. And then once you have everything set up that you want it to print, you would just save it to file or save it to a removable drive. And then um, make sure that that removable drive is your SD card. And once the file is there, you can go ahead and remove the SD card and put it in the printer and then kick that off. If this is your first time using Cura, uh, it might seem like it's a little bit overwhelming at first, uh, but it's not too bad. It, gets easier over time uh, once you learn some of the basics and if you use the profiles i provide they make for a really good starting point and in most cases you can just use them and not have to tweak anything but the temperature or infill um, but cura also does have a couple standard ones that they provide uh, low standard dynamic and super quality uh, so you can also try to use those as well if you wanted to and those have been getting better over the versions I think the last time I made a video like this, it was Cura 4.6 was the one that was out at the time. And the profiles weren't too great there. 
but they have gotten a lot better with 4.8. But if you have any questions, you can go in and leave a comment below or join us on Discord and I can try to help you out. All right guys, so that was the process to get Cura set up to work with your 3D printer. If you have any questions about the process, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can or join us on Discord. Um, as you can see, it wasn't very difficult, uh, but if it's the first time you've gone through it, it could be challenging at first, uh, but don't worry, it becomes a lot easier over time.